It's my honor to introduce to you um, our guest speaker. Of course, you know Richard Roberts was here last night. Wasn't that a wonderful service last night? Got us ready. I'm telling you, I'm full of expectation for this service this morning. I popped out of bed ready for, I'm just wondering, is this, has church started yet? I want to get there right now, you know. We are in the right place at the right time. God has a plan for every service, and it's a great honor, and, and it's a wonderful privilege for my wife and I to, um, the, the fellowship God has given us through our connection with uh, Pastor Nancy, with uh, such m amazing, uh, accurate ministers who know the flow of the Spirit and know how what God's doing and how to work with the Spirit of God and work with people to, you know, you know, get in contact with the, what God's doing. And uh, he so prepared us last night for what God wants to do this morning. And uh, my wife grew up watching him on TV. I wasn't watching him on TV because I grew up Mennonite and didn't have a TV. <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you, I, I have since watched many things on TV. And um, I'm, I'm going to stop digging this hole right now, you know. But watched many of their programs and wonderful, 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 wonderful. Praise God. Pioneers, uh, his dad and he actually helping his dad, pioneered many, many things on Christian TV. Um, and took, you know, as front men took many, many hits. The devil doesn't like front men who pioneer and blaze trails of faith and pioneer things in the, in the preaching of the gospel. But through it all, they have remained faithful. Uh, there are many times he could have quit, quit and I'm sure Royal Roberts and his wife quit, uh, but they didn't. They stayed faithful to God, and uh, they're seasoned. We have a seasoned minister in the pulpit this morning. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Matt to come and bring the podium down, but would you stand up with me this morning? I don't want to take any more time, but just welcome Brother Richard Roberts this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Praise you, Father. Just give him praise this morning. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. You're worthy of our praise. We lift up that name that we just sang about, the name of Jesus whose name is above every name named in heaven and earth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for what you did when you went to the cross, when you cut a new covenant in your shed blood for the remission of sin. Thank you that you took the stripes on your back, 39 stripes, one for every type of sickness and disease known to mankind. Thank you that you went into the grave to set captivity captive. And then you rose from the dead saying, because I live, you shall live also. Yes. We praise you. Thank you that greater is he who is in us yes. than he that is in the world. Yes. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and I command you, you loose God's property today. For we belong to God. Yes. We are not our own. We were yes. paid for yes. by the shed blood of Jesus on Calvary. Yes. And we thank you and we give you praise this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give a shout of praise to the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Ah, soul, are you weary 
and trouble No light in the darkness you see There's light for a look at the Savior And life more abundant and free His word will not fail you He promised Believe Him and all is gonna be well Then go to a world that is dying His precious salvation to tell Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. I love those, uh, I love those old hymns. 100 years old. Just as powerful today as it was in 1922 when it was written. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for those old songs. Amen. Don't forget the old songs. Amen. Thank you. I love the music of today. I love the worship of today, but don't forget. Don't forget how great thou art. Don't forget amazing grace. You saved a wretch like me. The slave trader who wrote that song. Who came out of slave training to write that. Don't forget the old songs. Praise God. Don't forget the Old Testament. Because it's confirmed by the New Testament. I know some, some ministers will never preach out of the Old Testament. Well, I don't, I don't believe in that. I believe in preaching the entire Bible. Take your, do you have your Bible with you? Take it out. Hold it up. Let's do what John Osteen did and what Joel Osteen does, okay? Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And today... I will hear and I will receive the word of God and I will respond with my faith and my words will be sweet and powerful and positive in Jesus name amen praise God hallelujah I was thinking about that last night after the service about your words did you get up this morning and say good morning Lord or did you say good Lord it's morning <laughs> Little difference, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Last night, we were preparing the way for what I believe God wants to do today. To get your words in harmony with the Word of God. So that you're not in conflict. You know, sometimes when I pray for people, all they want to do is rehearse the problem. And finally, I say to them, do you want me to pray for you or not? Because they're so busy. Well, let me tell you about this problem and this problem and this problem and this problem. Well, that doesn't, that, that doesn't matter to Jesus. Jesus is here now. You know, do you want to be well? Remember the, remember the, uh, the man at the pool of Bethesda uh, when Jesus entered into that, that virtual outside hospital. Uh, he said, do you want to be well? The man said, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. 
Jesus didn't talk about the pool. He asked, do you want to be well? He changed the subject and went on the negative side. Don't go on the negative side. You can find negative anywhere you want, except in this room. Okay? I was playing golf with this great actor, uh, James Garner. You may remember James Garner in lots of movies uh, that he uh, playing golf with him one day. And uh, he was one of the most negative people when he got on the golf course. He, he would get over a putt. He would say, I, I can't make this. I, I know I can't make this. Sure enough, he'd miss it. And he'd make another putt. I, I can't make this putt. And sure enough, he'd miss it. Finally, on the 18th hole, I said, Jim, why don't you say something positive? He said, okay, I'm positive I can't make this putt. <laughs> And sure enough, he missed it. Use your faith in your mouth. Use your faith in your mouth. Okay? Thank God. It's just as easy to confess the positive as it is to confess the negative. Yes, it is. All right. Um, let's have just a little bit of review this morning uh, from uh, several visits ago. Let's just let's remember uh, the different methods that God uses. Let me just rehearse several of the methods that God uses uh, in healing the sick. First of all, he uses the laying on of hands. He said, you shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Now there are those who say that was just for the disciples, but that's not true. Scripture also says, if you and I continue in his word, then we are his disciples. Now, we are not Peter, we're not James, we're not John, we're not the others, but I've got news. They're dead. They're not here and they're not coming back. Okay? Jesus is coming back, but they aren't. We'll meet them when we get to heaven. We are his modern day disciples. He said, you shall lay hands. How many of you believe the word of God written for you? Then he said, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. All right. It's not your responsibility to heal. It's your responsibility to pray. And so many Christians are, are caught up and they're intimidated by the fact that they think they have to perform a miracle. You do not have to perform a miracle. Your job is to pray and believe. It's God's job to do the healing. Put your Bible down for a minute. Put your pad down for a minute. Stand up on your feet. Turn and form a group of two or three. We're going to act this out and pray, pray for each other. We're going to lay hands on one another. As the scripture says in, John, in, in, in James 5, pray one for another that ye may be healed. All right? We're going to lay hands on them. We're not going to hold hands with them. We're going to lay hands on them. I know you've been wanting to hold hands with her for a long time, but don't do it then right now. She said, she said, so well, I've been waiting for him to take my hand. <laughs> All right, are you ready? On the count of three, we're going to pray. Now, when you pray, you're not going to pray some mamby-pamby, wow. sissy prayer. Come on. And you're surely not going to say, Lord, if it be your will. Don't pray some stupid prayer like that. That will never get the job done. You're going to take authority over the sickness and disease. You're going to command it to go in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Begin to pray. I mean, pray like you mean it. Say, in the name of Jesus, I command this sickness, this disease, this problem, this fear, this worry, whatever it is, to come out. Loose them in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Don't quit. That's it. Praise God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, some of you aren't quite through yet. That's all right. That's all right. Amen. What a way to start your engine. He said, he said, pray one for another that you may be healed. 
So who's going to be the ultimate beneficiary? You. You're praying for their healing, but you're expecting a boomerang. That prayer goes to them and comes back to you. All right, you can be seated. Now, another method is speaking the word. You remember the story of the Roman centurion who came to Jesus and said, my military aid is grievously tormented with, the, with paralysis. Right. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. In other words, I will, yeah. I will take my entourage, my disciples, we'll walk up the, the highway up to the area of Tiberias where the Roman garrison was stationed at that time. And I'll lay hands on your aid and he'll be healed. And the centurion said, you don't have to do that. Right. Yeah. Because I'm also a, a man under authority, yeah. and I speak uh, on the authority of Caesar, yeah. who was worshipped as a god. Yeah. And I understand authority. I have soldiers unto me, and I tell them to go, and they go. Come, and they come. Do this, and they do it. But I recognize that you have authority above all authority. And you don't have to come lay your hands on him. You just speak the word, and my aid will be healed. And Jesus marveled. And he said, I have not seen such faith like this, not in this whole nation. And here he was preaching among the Jews, and it took a Roman army captain to touch him with his faith. And he said to him, go, and your military aid will be healed. He sent the word. And the scripture says in Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I can see Jesus sending the word. Take your hand like this and say, I send the word. Say, I send the word. And the Bible says when, his, when he got about halfway back, yeah. news reached him that his aid had been healed. So that is another Bible-honored way of praying for the sick, sending the word. Put your Bible down, put your books down, stand back up again. Now this is just a preamble. I'm just getting to the introduction now. So don't, don't take this off my time, all right? This is just the introduction, all right? This is the preface, okay? This is the introductory word, okay, to this message. Now turn and form a group again, except don't touch them this time. <laughs> This is not laying on of hands because there are times when someone might not receive the laying on of hands. It might not be accepted to them, okay? So here's another method. It's not any better, not any worse, just different. Okay, now we're going to follow this out this morning as the next step. So put your hands up like this, and we're going to pray the same way, except we're not going to touch them. We're going to send the word. Are you ready? One, two, three. Begin to pray. Lord, I send the word. I send the word of healing. I come against sickness and disease and fear and doubt, anxiety, depression, discouragement, disillusionment. Come out. Loose God's property. I send the word just like Jesus did. Sometimes he touched them, sometimes he sent the word. And now we send the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. A cataract in the left eye being healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, by the way, how many of you just felt the power of God when somebody prayed for you? Look at that. Look around. Look at, yeah. look at how many hands. Well, I thought only the evangelist could pray for the sick. Uh, the Bible doesn't read that way to me. He says, you'll do the praying, and they'll do the receiving. All right, be seated, please. Now, we're still in the preamble now, okay? We're still in the introduction, the introductory word. You know, in all books, usually there's an introduction, there's a, there's a preamble, we might say, there's a, there's a dedication page. We're not into the dedication page yet. <laughs> so don't take, that thought off, don't take that off my time. Okay? No. <laughs> all right, now another method is the use of prayer cloths yeah. and uh, anointing oil. Mm -hmm. The scripture says that, that uh, the apostle Paul took handkerchiefs and aprons or what we would call cloths from his body. In other words, they were, I don't know, they were in his pocket, they were in, in his robe or however. They, somewhere he had, he had a cloth. And uh, those cloths which he had touched were sent to the sick. Yeah. Acts 19. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it says the sick were healed and the demonic spirits were driven out. That's right. Not because of the cloth. That's right. Cloth has no power. That's right. That's right. It's just an ordinary piece of cloth. Right. There's nothing powerful about my handkerchief. Right. You know, right. I've already used it once or twice today, so I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> But a lot of times people want my handkerchief, you know, uh, uh, if it's clean. <laughs> and, uh, and this cloth, when I pray over it, it becomes dangerous to the devil. Because yeah. yeah. it's got my spiritual DNA in it. Yeah. And it's a point of contact. Cloths don't heal, but they're points of contact to help people to release their faith. It is a healing aid, we might say. And the same is true of anointing oil. Anointing oil is used throughout the Bible. Uh, Saul was anointed to be king by Samuel. David was anointed by Samuel to be king. And anointing oil is found all through the Bible. Scripture in James 5 says, let them anoint them with oil. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick person and the Lord will raise them up. These things are points of contact. Yeah. The oil yeah. does not heal. Yeah. Oil has no healing properties. But it's a point of contact to help people to release their faith. Yeah. Now these, this is just a review, okay, a review of some things that I've shared with you on other trips up here to, to help get you prepared. Uh, well, this is like basic training. You know, all uh, NFL teams, NBA teams, college teams have, have a preseason, which they train, and they go back to basics. Right, yeah. And we as Christians need right. to go back to basics from time yes. to time yes. and remember our foundational principles right. so we can take the next step. Yeah. Amen. How many of you want to take the next step yeah. this morning? Yes. All right, then open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15, Exodus 15, 26, or write this scripture down. Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. I am the Lord that healeth thee. It is God who does the healing. Yes. 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 Thank God for the person who prays. Yeah. Thank God for the doctor who treats and does surgery, yes. Yes. but we give the honor of the healing and the glory of the yes. healing to God. Yes. Right. God is yes. the source yes. of our supply, yes. the source of our total supply. Yes. God heals through different methods. He heals through prayer, He yes. heals through diet, yes. through climate, through exercise, through medical help. Amen. But yes. He is the source of all healing. Yes. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. So when someone prays for you, thank them, but give the glory to God. Amen. When you go to the doctor, thank him, but give the glory to God. Okay? Yes. You know, I am not anti medicine. I am for getting well. That's right. yeah. Amen. And I don't really care how it comes. Yeah. If I get a headache, I pray and I take two Tylenol. Right. Yeah. And I'm not really concerned which one works. Yeah. I just want to get rid of the headache. Yeah. And I want to give the honor and the glory to God. Yeah. I mean, let's be practical. Yeah. Now, I grew up in a day when Christians would not go to a doctor. And they literally tied one of God's hands behind his back. And said, God, you can't operate this way in my life. But thank God people have begun to understand that yes. God is the source of all yes. healing. Yes. Now turn over to Acts 10.38. Yes, Acts 10.38. These are the words of Peter. How Jesus went about doing good and healing. Listen to that word. And healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Yes. Yes. How Jesus was anointed. Yes. Thank God for the anointing. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel the anointing right now. I felt it as they were singing this morning. I felt it as you were raising tithes and offerings this morning. I felt it as you, as you were talking. I felt the anointing that was on you. Don't tell me you can swallow strawberry ice cream down your throat and feel it and not feel the anointing. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you can feel the anointing. It's, it's, it's tangible. It's present. It's here today. Yes. And one of the reasons why I love this church is because there's so much anointing here. Yeah. Now look, I've been places where I've been places where you want to say, when do we view the body? I mean, it's there's a dead. I've been in churches like that, you know. Yeah. They're dead. They preach three points and a poem and a handshake, and that's all you get. Yeah. But yeah. you get something here yes. to take out there. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because out there is where it matters. Yeah. In here we're coming together, but out there is where we need it. Where people are dying and crying and sighing and going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. 
This is, that's what it's about. It's about out there. Yeah. It's not what we do in here as much as what we do out there. Right. When we touch people. Because he said, you shall be witnesses right. unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Jerusalem represents your home, yes. your family. Judea represents the places you go. Samaria represents the rough places in your life where it's hard to be a witness, and the whole world. But it didn't happen until they came into that upper room and there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Thank God, I'm so happy that I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, that I pray in tongues every day. And when I pray in tongues, the devil has no idea what I'm saying. He has a conniption fit every time I pray in tongues. And then I can stop and pray in my own language and interpret like the Apostle Paul taught us in 1 Corinthians 14. Suddenly I get ideas and information and a new understanding like never before. Suddenly I know what to do. I know what to say. I know what to, where to go. All right. Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He was anointed. The anointing of God is that divine Holy Ghost presence that comes upon a believer and fills him or her up and separates them from themselves so much so that when they speak, it's like God talking. Yeah. 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 That's what the anointing is. I know when it's there and I know when it's not. And sister, brother, it's here today. That anointing is here. It's on me. It's on you today. And we're in an atmosphere for miracles. Now turn over to 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. 3 John has only one chapter. 3 John, the second verse. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Now that's healing. Prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That means that God wants you to be well in every area of your life. He gets no glory out of you being sick. He gets no glory out of sickness and disease. He gets no glory out of fear and doubt, anxiety, depression, mental torment. He gets no, no, no encouragement. He gets no blessing out of that. He wants us to be healed in every area of our lives. And that refutes anyone who says that healing is not for today. Well, if healing is not for today, then why would you ever go to a doctor? If healing is of God, then why don't you ask him for a double, or excuse me, if sickness is of the, if, if sickness, I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, if sickness is of God, then why don't you ask him for a double portion of sickness? But it's not of God. He said, I wish above everything that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. In other words, he wants your soul prospering to be commensurate or equal to your body and your spirit. There's supposed to be a balance between your body, between your mind, your will and emotions, between your spirit man. He wants there to be a balance commensurate level. He wants you to be healed in your body, healed in your mind, and he wants your soul level at the same. Amen. That's a full, that's the full gospel. That's the full life. And that's the gospel that I've come to preach. Amen. Now, I've had the privilege of preaching in nearly 55 countries all over the earth. I've, uh, I've laid hands on 34 presidents and heads of state. I have been in uh, crusades with up to 200,000 people in one service. I've seen the miracle power of God, and you're too late to tell me that God can't do it anymore. I've seen the great miracles. I saw God create a second breast in a woman who had been born with only one. I saw it happen. I saw a man who had had his toe amputated, and as I prayed, God created a new toe and put a nail on it. I've seen tremendous healing miracles. I saw a woman who had a volleyball-sized tumor in her belly. Just, the the tumor just disappeared. I've seen people with full-blown AIDS healed by the power of God. 
I've seen cripples walk, people coming out of wheelchairs. I remember once I was preaching in Madison Square Garden in New York City in the, the Felt Forum, which is a smaller auditorium, seats about 5,000 people uh, in Madison Square Garden. And I remember there were nine wheelchairs that were emptied that day. Glory to God. And a six foot nine guy came and threw his Bible at me. And that's how the service started. <laughs> And I had to cast the devil out of him within the first 30 seconds of the service. <laughs> and God did so many miracles. You come too late to tell me that God doesn't heal. I've seen too many miracles. I was on television one night with my wife back in the years when we did our programs live. We did that for 12 years live on Monday through Friday nights. And I gave a word of knowledge one night about a man who had had three fingers cut off in the Vietnam War. And uh, they had sewed them back on in the mass units, but since the 1960s, he's had no feeling in those three fingers. And I said, sir, I don't know where you're watching, but whoever you are, wherever you are, God's healing your fingers now. And I got a call from a man named Mike in Nashville. He said, I was a member of the Seabees in uh, the Vietnam War, and uh, through an accident, I severed all three fingers. They were cut off. And the mass unit doctors sewed them back on, but I've not had any feeling in those fingers since the 1960s. Wow. But when you gave that word, suddenly all the feeling came back in my fingers. Yeah. Glory, glory, glory. glory, glory. glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. One night I got a word of knowledge about a woman uh, who, had, uh, who had been was pregnant and had been just diagnosed that she had cervical cancer. And the doctors had said to her, you're going to have to have an abortion in order to save your life. And I said, ma'am, I don't know where you're watching, but come over to your television and put your hands up against my hands and let me pray. And just at that time, a woman in New Jersey had come into her home. Her mother was there and she was watching me on television. And as she entered her house, she heard me give that word of knowledge. And she walked over, put her hands up against the television. Her husband was a police officer and he came in about that same time. And she felt the power of God all the way in New Jersey, long, hundreds, and, hundreds of miles away from Oklahoma. And the next day or two, she went to the doctor. They couldn't find a trace of cancer. That's right. Gone. Glory, glory, glory. She delivered a healthy little girl. Glory, glory, glory. You come too late to tell me God doesn't heal. <laughs> I've seen the power of God in action. And ministering in these Fresh Oil Fellowship churches across America uh, uh, under, under Pastor Nancy, who has invited me and, and introduced me to so many pastors over the past few years, I have seen so many miracles. And that's what God's going to do today. Yes. Because He's a good God. Yes. Yes. Say that with me. God is a good God. Say that out loud. God is a good God. You see, the devil is a bad devil. But God is a good God. And He sent Jesus. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And the older I get, they tell me, the more I look like my dad. <laughs> well, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. <laughs> okay? <Yeah>. <laughs> and his healing power is present today. For he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's no respecter of persons. He's looking for faith. Yes. He's looking for someone who'll get his words or her words in line with his word. Yes. And that's why I did what I did last night. To prepare the way for you today to receive healing. Many of you have come, especially today, believing for a touch from the Heavenly Father. And I am believing and I am releasing my faith that you're going to receive it. Amen. That's what I live my life for. Amen. That's why I'm ministering to underdeveloped nations, pastors all over the world, teaching them. Because in those underdeveloped nature, uh, nations, each pastor over a year's time will have some type of contact with at least a thousand people. Yeah. And I have a dream and a goal in my heart of reaching 100,000 pastors a year. That would be 100 million people in a year's time touched by my ministry. That's what I'm striving for. That's what I'm reaching for. Just in the past six months, I've already ministered to some 35,000 pastors all over the world. Some, some in person, some by Zoom. And we use all the technology. You know, if Jesus were walking the earth today, he'd have an iPad. Yeah. He'd have a smartphone. He'd have a laptop. He'd be on Twitter. 
he'd do live Facebook posts because he used everything in that day that was available. He would use everything today. And we should not curse the darkness. We should light a candle. And Christians have been so ignorant over the years. You know, they, they bound, you mentioned you grew up Mennonite not having TV. They, 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 they said the TV was of the devil. Yeah. Instead of taking authority over it uh, yeah. Yeah. and taking control. Yeah. And, and we said, well, movies, we, no, we gave movies to Hollywood. We let them produce them, you know. Instead of, instead of saying, no, we're going we're to have control over that. Yeah. And then they call the, they call the Internet the, the World Wide Web, you know. And it was of the devil. No, let's take the internet and use it for the glory of God. And one thing, if there's anything good that came out of COVID, it's the fact that Christians began to wake up and use the technology. Suddenly, pastors were doing online services because they couldn't have people come into the church because of the COVID restrictions. And they were having tremendous miracles and blessings and people getting saved all over the world because uh, of the situation they were in. They learned how to, in the middle of that situation, to use the technology. Jesus would have used all the technology. And so we're going to use all the technology. That's why I'm doing these conferences, so many of them by Zoom. I didn't have to go to Pakistan. I could could touch 15,000 people in one day. And the testimonies of healing, and the same in India. The testimonies of healing. We got a testimony the other day from one of the pastors that I had administered to in India. I taught him how to pray for the sick like we did a moment ago and to how to lay hands on people. One of his church members was bitten by a poisonous snake in the bed. The snake got up. Now we're talking India, rural India. Snake got up in the bed. Poisonous snake bit the man. Well, the man killed the snake, but he didn't go to the doctor. By the next morning, he was foaming at the mouth from the poison. And the the family rushed him to the hospital. They called the pastor who had been under my ministry, teaching teaching him how to pray for the sick. He went running to the hospital to pray. The doctor said the poison has gone too far in his system. There's nothing we can do medically. He got up on the bed, laid his hands on him and prayed, cast that spirit of, of, of infirmity out of him, and the man was totally healed. And the doctor said, I've never seen it like this. I've never seen someone who'd gone this far with poison in their body healed. And it was a witness to the doctor. That's what's happening in these countries. They're learning how. They're learning how. And they said, we would have prayed for the sick before, but we didn't know we could. Nobody told us. Oh, there's so much going on in the world today. It's a perilous time to be alive, but it's a great time to be alive. What a time to be a Christian. What a time to stand up for the power of God and be unashamed. I'm not ashamed that I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed that I'm a witness. I'm not ashamed that I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm not ashamed of the anointing of God. I'm not ashamed that I've got victory in my life. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it's it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes. And how I thank God for it. And how I, I appreciate the opportunity to come and to be with you today. Because I know what God is about to do. Amen. Whoever needs healing in your back, stand up right now. If you've got pain in your back and you need healing in your back right now, I want you to stand up. If you've got pain in your shoulders, I want you to stand up right now for prayer. Anyone with back pain or shoulder pain, upper part of your back, the left side of your back, the right side of your back, the lower part of your back, a disc, a vertebra problem, anything like that or any shoulder problem, bursitis, or clavicle, or collarbone, or anything like that. Any pain, any residual pain that shoots down your arm from your shoulder. Father, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. Reach over and touch that person who's standing. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I come against this satanic attack of pain in your back and in your shoulders. Right now, in the authority of Jesus' name, I arrest it. And by the anointing of the power of God upon me today, I, here it comes, I send the word into your back. I send the word into your shoulders right now for healing, healing. Satan, take your hands off this back. Satan, take your, there it goes, there comes the healing power now. Take your hands off this back. Take your hands off these shoulders now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. 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 There's healing. It's coming right now. It's coming right now. There's the healing power. It's coming right now. It's not my power. It's God's power. But it's flowing through me into you right now by the authority of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now examine your back right now. Start doing what you thought you couldn't do before. Examine your shoulder. Move your shoulder. Move in such a way that you've not been able to move. Just see what God's beginning to do. See what God's beginning to do right now. How many of you can tell right now there's healing coming in your back? Healing coming in your shoulder? Wave your hand at me. Now look at the hands all over. Hallelujah. Now you who have pain in your hips, stand up please. You have pain in your hips. You have pain in your knees. Stand up please. You have pain in your feet or a circulation problem. You stand up, please. Your hips, your knees, your ankles, your feet, your Achilles tendon, your neck. Any type of arthritis, bursitis, or anything like that. Any of the uh, ritus family. <laughs> arthritis. Anything like that. Any type of inflammation. And you need prayer for your, for your neck or for your, your hips or for your, or for your arm or for your elbow or for your, your knees. So many people are suffering today in their knees. They have fluid on their knees and when they walk, uh, they, they, they almost rattle uh, because of the, of the pain they're in and the inability to go up and down stairs and fingers. Yes, fingers, any type of, of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, problem with your fingers or inability uh, to, to move your fingers without pain or swelling or a crooked finger. Remember he said, I'll make the crooked places straight. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever think about that in terms of your fingers? Some people's fingers are gnarled and twisted, but he said, I'll make the crooked places straight. Yes. Yes. Now, somebody who's, who's a sitting, touch them right now in Jesus' name. Father, it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by the spirit that I come against this problem in the neck. The neck that, that grates when you turn it and, and it catches and, and it twinges and it hurts. And it's like nerves, uh, a nerve damage in the authority of Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of this neck. Every pain, come out now in Jesus' name. And the pain that's in your hips, the pain that shoots down the back of your hips, that goes down your legs, and it's like sciatica and other situations where the pain just shoots down all the way down to your knees. In the name of Jesus, come out. Every pain, come out, come out. There it goes. Come out now in Jesus' name. Every pain, every, every swelling in the knee, every swelling in the knee, all the swelling, all the problem with the ACL, the MCL, in the authority of Jesus' name, every pain, come out. All the stiffness, all the inflammation, come out. All the swelling, go down. I rebuke this pain now. Satan, you loose it in Jesus' name. All the pain that goes down the back of your calf and into your ankles and into your feet and into your toes. Every pain, there it goes, come out in the name of Jesus. And all that pain, the, the carpal tunnel syndrome and all that problem with your fingers and your hands and the inability to open and close your hands without stiffness. I rebuke that and the crooked places become straight in the name of Jesus. Every finger straighten up. Your hand was designed to be able to open and close without pain, without discomfort. Every pain, come out in the name of, there it goes, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now there's, there's healing. It's just shooting up and down somebody's arm right now in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now just put some weight on that foot. Examine your knee. Examine your hip. Examine your neck. Examine your fingers. Bend your knees. Walk out in the aisle if you need to. Just see what God is doing. Just see what God is doing. Healing's happening right now. Right now. I send the word according to Psalm 107 verse 20. I send it to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's happening all over. 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 It's happening on the left. It's happening in the center. It's happening on the right. In Jesus' mighty name. Anyone with a blood pressure problem? Anyone with a blood pressure problem? Stand up, please. 
or anyone with a hypertension problem or some type of heart condition or a blood sugar problem and you need prayer, either high blood sugar or low blood sugar or high blood pressure or low blood pressure. Anyone who has any type of, of stomach disorder, problem with your kidney or your liver or your gallbladder or, or anything like that or the digestive tract or your, your colon, anything like that and you need prayer, you stand up right now please in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anyone who has a breathing problem, allergies, sinuses, anything like that, a breathing problem, any type of pulmonary problem in your lungs and you need healing. If there are cancer, anyone with cancer, or, or, or you have a family member with cancer and you want prayer. We're seeing, we're seeing a lot of cancer healings now. I'm talking about stage four cancer being healed. We're getting testimonies all the time about cancer healings. Cancer is not too hard for God to handle. Cancer, I rebuke you. Touch that person who's standing. In the name of Jesus, every trace of cancer, come out! I arrest you and I take authority over you. you. Satan, loose your cancerous grip in, in the name of Jesus. Every red cell, every white cell, be normal. Every outlaw cell, I curse you at the root. Every cancer, come out. Every tumor, every mass, every growth, come out in the authority of Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. My, there is a power of God in this room today. Hallelujah. Any breathing problem, I rebuke the problem with your lungs, the emphysema, the allergies, the sinuses, the problem in your nasal passages, down in your throat, in your tonsils, in Jesus' name. Every bit of that, come out. Come out. Come out. As an evangelist in the healing ministry, I take authority over it now in Jesus' name. Lungs breathe. Lungs breathe. Every pulmonary problem come out in the name of Jesus. And the organs, the organs in, in the lower, in, in the, in the in down below your chest, your, your gallbladder, your, your intestines, uh, your, your colon, your pancreas, your liver, in the name of Jesus, be healed and be normal. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I rebuke that blockage. Come out in the name of Jesus. Heart disease, any type of irregular heartbeat or arrhythmia, be healed. I send the word to your heart to beat normally. And the, for the person who has an enlarged heart, heart go down to normal size. And hypertension, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'll do that. Sickle cell, I arrest you in the name of Jesus. And lupus, I arrest you in Jesus' name. Come out by the authority of the name of Jesus, whose name is above it. Thank you, Father. I rebuke the high blood pressure. High blood pressure, I speak to you. Come out in the name of Jesus. Be normal. Be down in the, nor the normal range. And the pressure that's too low, come up back into the normal range. The normal range is around 120 over 80. Come into the normal range in the name of Jesus. And the blood sugar level, the diabetes and the, the, the hypoglycemia, come out in the name of Jesus. All of your blood sugar, just normalize. Be normal in the name of Jesus. Be normal in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the authority of Jesus' mighty name. Uh, just remain standing for a minute. Anyone with a problem with your eyes, stand up with them, please. Uh, cataract, glaucoma, any problem with your eyes or your hearing, stand up, please. Or any pain that's in your head, stand up with them. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I come against the problem with your eyes. I rebuke every glaucoma. I rebuke every cataract. I rebuke any problem with your iris or your pupil or your optic nerve. I rebuke any retinal problem. Every eye condition be healed in Jesus' name. And I send the word to your eye for healing now. And the loss of hearing, the eustachian tube, the balance problem, the equilibrium problem be healed now in the name of Jesus. I set my faith with you for it to happen today. Today is the day, Jesus said. The day, today is the day of salvation. That's healing. That's victory miracles in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Any pain, anyone suffering any type of chronic pain or Crohn's disease or anything like that, any chronic pain, come out 
in the authority of Jesus' name. I arrest you, pain. I arrest you, pain. Pain, I arrest you. Come out. Loose your grip, Satan, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, begin examining yourself. People are being healed right now. Examine yourself. Some of you will need to go back to your doctor and have it confirmed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, lift your hands and begin to thank him in advance. Thank him for healing that is in process. Thank him for healing that is in process. Thank you for healing that is in process. Go ahead. Lift your voice. Give him thanks for healing that is in process. We thank you, Father. We praise you for healing. Healing. Healing's in process. Healing was made possible through the atonement. He took the stripes on his back for our healing. We don't have to put up with this. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Now I want to ask you a question. How many of you can tell beyond any shadow of doubt you just received a healing this morning? Put your hand up. Put your hand up. If you can tell, I mean, you know there's a healing. If that's you, stand up. Come down here and make a line in front. Stand up. Come down here and make a line. Make a line all the way across here. Look at them come. Look at them come. Look at them come. Dr. Jeff, get a microphone. Look at them come. Come on. Look at them come. Look at them come. If you know, you received a healing. This is what's happening wherever I go. It's miraculous. Sometimes as many as 20% of a congregation getting healed by the power of God. Something happened to me this past summer up in Colorado. I was preaching for Andrew Womack in a healing conference. And something, a new level of anointing for healing came on me. And it was obvious to everyone that's there. I don't know that I've ever seen that many people healed in one service as we saw in Colorado in that service. And there was a huge crowd there. So many miracles. And it's, it's happened every place I have been since then. It's a new level of anointing. And I, I, I've been praying and believing and releasing my faith and calling it in into my life. And I got it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you're witnessing it. And what we did last night prepared the way for this. You may have said, I wonder why he's doing this. Now you know. Dr. Ogle, start down there. What happened to you when we prayed? Um, so for me, sorry, my voice is a little gone. Um, I have stage four cancer. I was diagnosed with it and, um, I felt the warmth of God just flood over me. And then I was holding her and she kind of jumped a little bit. So. Ma'am, what, what happened to you? Hi, um, I was diagnosed with arthritis and, um, inflammation throughout my entire body. And I have motion now on my wrist. Oh. Pain's gone? Oh yeah, the pain's gone and um, uh, it doesn't click. <laughs> it, like the, there was extra um, calcium on the bone uh -huh. um, and it would click and very painful to write with. So uh, here's my brace that I don't have to wear anymore. <laughs> what happened to you? Uh, I got diagnosed with post-viral gastrointestinal dismobility about eight years ago. Say that one more time. <laughs> Post and, uh, what? It's a fancy way of saying your digestive system is messed up and your lower intestine can pull Your out stomach's all messed up. I got yes. it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. What did you feel when we prayed? Healing. I feel healed. You just feel healed. Praise God. What happened to you, ma'am? I've had some chronic issues with my right hip and with my neck, and I felt... Really nice resolution in my neck. Felt really nice. And when I stood up, usually after I've been sitting for a while, when I take up, I have a hitch and I cannot walk. I have no issues. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. What happened to you? Um, well, I can feel my left ear has been crying like I can't hear out of it. And I can feel that healing come, but I wanted to testify last night. When you ask people to stand up, you know, if you're speaking negative, and you need, so I stood up, and I was standing there, and while you're still talking, all of a sudden, right here in my back, the whole thing just went, 
and my back went back into place wow. just perfectly last night. So. Praise God. Yeah. What happened to you? Um, actually, I was diagnosed with the uh, RA. And, um, What's you, that? Rheumatoid arthritis, okay. arthritis throughout my whole body, inflammation. And anyway, um, my neck now is, is free. It doesn't, uh, there's no pain there. My knees are just doing perfect. I can do a little j jig here, whatever. And so I'm just praising him. The healing and wholeness has taken place. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What happened to you? Uh, my toes are crooked on one foot from arthritis, and I could feel the power of God. And Did you my say toes crooked? Just went straight. You say it was crooked? Yeah. Is it crooked now? No. <laughs> it's straight? Straight. <laughs> we were just, we were in Alabama preaching for Robin Bullock. You may have seen him online. He's a prophet. And uh, there was a young woman who came into the service and said, do you remember me? And I looked at her and I, I, I said, I'm sorry. She said, I'm Emily Dia. Well, I remembered that when she was nine, her foot was turned sideways like this, watching me on television. And when I gave a word of knowledge, her foot straightened out. And I just almost began to weep when I saw her. She's now, she's graduating from the University of Alabama, Birmingham uh, with a master's degree. And I said, is your foot straight? She said, just look. He said, it's as straight as it can be. Her foot was, one foot was this way, one foot was like this. And she couldn't walk without tripping over her feet. And, and, that's, and I, that's where God gave me the idea. I make the crooked places straight. And it's straight now. Hallelujah. What, hey, mama, what happened? What happened to you? I have pain in my left hip, and it's not hurting. <laughs> what happened to you, sir? Uh, my neck was uh, sore, and I went like this, and all of a sudden the crackling was gone. <laughs> Just like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What happened to you? Uh, I've got some di digestive issues, and uh, I feel better. But uh, last night, actually, I, I slept through the night and, and didn't have any pain. So I was slept uh, through the night. <laughs> Lord, night. let it be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I set a record. I only got up once last night. Normally, it's a couple times. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm believing with you. And I'm, really, I'm receiving that from me as well, OK? Yeah, and also when I get up in the night, I don't want to step on the corner of the table like I did last night. You know where one toe goes one way and one toe goes the other? I needed a healing about 3 a.m. What happened? Um, I had a back pain. Look closer, Jeff. I had a back, my back was hurting me, and after you pray, I can bend it without pain. <laughs> How long has the pain bothered you? It's been about a week. About a week? And the pain's gone now? It's gone. Praise God. <laughs> what happened to you when we prayed? Um, I've been dealing with an uh, issue in my right eye that my vision is not clear in that eye. And when you prayed, I just felt the power of God come on me, and I can tell that it's clearing up. You see me clearly out of your, I'll cover your left eye. Can you see me clearly now? Not completely, but I can tell it's better than it was. You tell it's better. Yeah. Remember when the Lord prayed for a blind man twice? In the name of Jesus, I, there it goes. I send the word into that eye. Now, now look at me. Am I clear now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's clear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happened to you when we prayed? Um, I saw you doing this over there. In 1999, I was hit by the bomb in, during the war in my country, in former Yugoslavia. And it caused a lot of problem. I got severe chronic fatigue. I got fibromyalgia. Uh -huh. I got headaches. What and happened when we prayed today? I did feel uh, my adrenal, uh, adrenal glands were harmed uh -huh. during that uh, struck of the bomb. Yes. I feel today that left my, it was 24 it left years your body? Of, of really hard, feeling of struck of those adrenal glands. Uh -huh. And I feel today that left, and also I had pain in all my body with fibromyalgia. Pain is gone. My shoulder pain is gone. My hip pain is gone. My <laughs> leg pain is gone. I have, I have no, <laughs> 
I also have uh, hypoglycemia due to injury on adrenaline glands that is gone, and I feel my, I'm unlighted. I feel like I see better. I see like Holy Spirit fully filled me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And That's what you thank call it. you, Lord. That's what you call a general overhaul. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to you? Well, last night I was sitting down and you prayed, and um, I felt uh, like what Brittany said, the warmth, uh, the power went into my back. And I, it was, got looser, but this morning I stood up, and it was for my left ankle. It's been swollen. I've had many uh, ankle sprains, and I just feel it's restored fully. It's it's lighter than ever, and it's no no swollen. <laughs> no. Praise God. What happened to you? Yeah. Um, I have um, inflammation in my joints, and I've had it for many years. Um, degenerative arthritis in my lower back. What do you feel when and we prayed today? Actually, I feel great. My knees felt like they were just like liquidating you know what I mean like I can liquidating yeah I can bend them they, they I like don't that. have any it was a good liquidation that's good liquidation yes and my feet have been hurting me okay so. praise God then, what happened to you um I um I had lower back pain and it was it was not going away with chiropractor or anything and um it's not hurting anymore. <laughs> That's a healing, isn't it? Yeah. What happened? What happened to you? Well, you called out shoulders, and I just had this tightness in my shoulder. And, and it goes up into my neck, and when you called that out, the, the anointing went in, and it was just like it just slowly, it was warm, mm -hmm. and slowly released. Praise God. I can God. still feel it now. Praise God. Just, Praise God. Yes, the warmth and just the relaxation yeah. Praise I can God. hold my shoulder down. What happened? My shoulder was healed, so I can move it. <laughs> Free from pain. Free of pain. Thank you, Jesus. Free of pain. Yes. Free of pain. What happened? I've had digestive issues since before Thanksgiving, and uh, I had a lot of pain in my bowels, that kind of thing. The pain's completely gone. I felt it. I felt it fall to my feet, and I also had pain in my elbow. I've had an impartation for it, but today was the day I received my healing. Thank you. Praise God. What happened, worship leader? <laughs> um, uh, a year ago, um, I went snowboarding with some friends and landed on my tailbone a lot. First time snowboarding. Um, and since that day on, anytime I sit for like around the 20 minute mark, I, my lower back starts hurting and even just sitting in service, it was hurting, and then um, so I, I stood up and was just praying. And then when you finished praying, I just twisted and uh, was sh stretching things that were painful when it was painful, but it's completely gone now. Amen. God deliver you from snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> That's for kids, okay? <laughs> That's for kids. <laughs> yes. Um, I had kind of a left side overhaul. I felt warmth in my elbow when you're well, when I had hand laid on my elbow. I could feel that warmth, and that I don't know what I did, but it was bothering me. My ankle healed in whole, Jesus name. On your left side. Yep. And then I had like a little knot in my shoulder just happened this earlier this week, and it's just the whole left side just is all straightened back up. Hallelujah. What happened? I hurt my shoulder in a work in construction earlier in September last year, and as you were praying, I just was holding up my hands, and it felt I felt hands on my shoulder. Nobody was touching me, but I felt hands you on felt my shoulder. The hands of the Lord. Adjust, adjust, like four adjustments, and there's no pain at all. And then I have I had three fingers that I broke in high school, and all three of them have straightened out. I will make the crooked places straight. You know, every time I quote that scripture in a service, somebody gets healed of crooked fingers. And if I don't quote it, it didn't happen. I'm glad I said it today. Amen. What happened to you, ma'am? Um, for probably about a couple of weeks to a month, my eyes have been starting to kind of go blurry at times. Uh -huh. And so sometimes when I sit in the service, the lights like overpower it. So then things just start kind of blending together. What are you seeing differently so today, now? today, I stood up, I closed my eyes and was receiving my healing. I opened my eyes and it was like, 
everything was separated, like fully clear. I could see every, like- You see it clear now. Your, every hair on your head, I can see now, even with the lights <laughs> looking at me, you know, like, <laughs> it's the details. <laughs> Well, I wish you'd seen me 30 years earlier. There was a lot more. <laughs> and it was black, too. They're all there. They look great. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> what happened? Um, I have post-concussion syndrome, CTE, torn labrum. I've got lots of damages in my nerves and stuff like that. And I just, I haven't had a, I've had a headache for two years straight. And I just, I can finally two think. Two years of head pain? I can feel and I just what did you feel when we prayed I just felt it all go away you felt it all go Praise away yes. brother sister that's a healing two years of pain gone Lord never come back in Jesus name what happened to you brother I got in a snowmobile accident in 2018 was never able to lift my shoulder more than this far I can go all the way up now without locking, so I received it. Snowmobiles for kids. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Stay off of snowmobiles. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't do any roller skating either. <laughs> what happened to you, ma'am? Um, I have some soreness in my arm with lifting, you know, I work at the daycare, and the kids can be kind of heavy sometimes, so um, I was just feeling that soreness, you know, throughout the day, and I take stuff that doesn't really work that well sometimes, but when you prayed, I was just moving, I was making movement with it, and it's just like, it's just the anointing, I could feel it in my arm, and it's just way better. Praise God. Praise God, and my toes are healed and whole too. Praise God. Amen. What happened to you, ma'am? My hands were hurting, and uh, it was probably the prayer before, and I don't know what ailment we were praying for, but the lady in front of me reached up, and she, I was standing, and she was sitting, and she grabbed my hands, and I could feel uh, not a zap of electricity, but a, a wiggle of electricity go through my body. And so I figured it was moving, so let's claim everything. <laughs> So you claimed it, yeah. I, it's, How's it I, now? It's wonderful. I have no pain in my Praise God. Now. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. I will praise him. What happened to you, ma'am? <laughs> well, it's a couple of things. Um, I lift a lot of heavy things in the kitchen at the daycare and just been having pressure in the middle of my hand. That is all gone. It's gone. And then swelling in my leg uh, where water was like leaking out or something. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But I believe the scarring is all gone off my leg. But yet you tell the, the difference in your leg? I can tell yeah. the, the blood is flowing. Praise yes, God. Ma'am, what happened to you? Um, I had um, surgery for breast cancer two weeks ago, and they said they didn't get it all, but I'm healed. Amen. Amen. I received my healing. Can't wait for you to go back and have that examined. Amen. Praise God. What happened to you? My feet have been sore, throbbing, and for about the last six months, and it was a warm sensation, and now it's, I can actually stand here and all not the, be in pain. All the throbbing's gone? Oh, you gone. stand without pain? Yes. Praise Absolutely. God. Man, what happened to you? I have a shoulder joint right here that's really been sore, and it kind of limits my movement, but it's all fine now. Can't move like this? Can you move yeah, like it, that? Yeah, yeah, I can always. Can move like that? Yeah, now put it behind you. you. And a big toe that is a little bit small. You have now. a big toe, so do I. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my feel. Oh, what's something happened to your big toe? <laughs> yes. I, I, is it all right now? Yeah. Yeah. First healing I ever had in my ministry was a big, was a big toe. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. What happened to you? Um, arthritis and um, a lot of inflammation have attacked over the last few years and it's gotten worse and worse and it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Hurts all the time? Most of the time. Yeah. Hurting now at all? It doesn't hurt. I you can have... hold a pen. You can hold a pen. <laughs> <laughs> It hurt. <laughs> what happened to you, sir? I've been having a sciatica nerve pain uh, for the past several months, down like in my hips, down to my feet. Did you hear me say sciatica today? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. I heard you were thinking about it. that, weren't you? Yeah. And what happened when we prayed? Uh, well, I was set back down. I felt a different sensation in my leg. <clears throat> 
It's usually difficult to stand, but I've been standing, listening to everybody's testimony. I don't feel any pain right now. Praise God. What happened to you, young man? I've done something that I haven't done for a while, and um, I felt back pain as I was doing it. But then when you called out uh, back pain, I feel no pain anymore. No more pain? No more pain. How old are you? Um, 15. 15. No more pain in Jesus' name. Amen. Young man, what happened to you? Um, I had a lot of allergies since I was born, and um, when you called out allergies, I felt a warmth over me, and I didn't, and I felt like they weren't there. Was it allergies in your breathing? Yeah, I did also. Are you breathing better now because of it? Yeah. You tell it's gone? Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord. Yeah. What happened to you, sir? I, um, when you did the back thing, it went away immediately. I mean, I've been complaining about back. When did you say back... when I did the back thing? <laughs> when... <laughs> When you were talking about it. He said when I did the back. <laughs> now that's a new one on me. I, I now can do the back thing. So what happened when I did the back thing? <laughs> well, I said that wrong. <laughs> but the, the back pain left immediately. Okay. But the most amazing thing is you were talking about the knees. Uh -huh. A year and a half ago I was told that it, I was going to be having knee surgery in a year and a half, and I know how this knee feels. The knee straightened right up, and I don't feel a thing. I'm canceling the whole idea. What happened to you? I've had a burning and sharp pain, and sometimes feels like a stabbing, like in my right thigh, for at least a couple of years. And um, I got per last night, and I feel I was healed since last night. I usually compress it and feel soreness and. I don't feel no soreness pain. now? No. Praise God. What happened to you, ma'am? Um, doctors diagnosed me with uh, stage five or um, kidney disease. And so today, when you were talking about the body parts and stuff and everything, all of a sudden it's just like a tingle, like my hands are hot. Then wherever my hands were hot, I touched wherever it's been painful. Uh -huh. And it's just like it just left. And so it's a way good feeling. Well, I rebuke the kidney disease in the name of Jesus. Every trace of kidney disease come out in Jesus' name. I expect to hear a great testimony about that too. Ma'am, what happened to you? Um, well, I have a multitude of issues. I did. And anyway, last night when you were praying for us, I felt something leave out of the middle of my back. It was just like everything pulled up out of my body and just left. And it's been, the pain's been um, clearing up since then. Um, I can see better. I can breathe better. And I have almost no pain. So, you said which is almost really no pain? There's a little bit here and there, but it started leaving in your shoulders? last night. Yeah, in my shoulders and in my legs. A little Put your hands bit. on your shoulders like this. Every pain, come out. In Jesus' name. Now start moving them. Yeah, now it's completely gone. So, <laughs> and that's, that's the first time I have not felt pain since 2008. So, so. My goodness, that's 14, 15 years. What happened to you? I had had this uh, respiratory thing trying to come up on me and it was affecting my breathing and my vocals. And last night when you talked about things for special healing and I stood up for that and I knew it started working in me last night because when I would lay down, I can't lay down without hearing this wheezing or the stuff in my throat. And that's been going on for a, a few days. And today I could feel my breathing open up without the, uh -huh. the wheezing. Praise and, God. Who? Yeah. Praise, praise God, God. Praise God. What happened to you? I've been having lower back pain, and when I stood up today early to get a little healing, I felt a little better in my back. It's still there a little bit, but not as much as it was. Put your hand right where the the, the rest of the pain is. Now, in the, uh, there it goes right now. In the authority of Jesus, all that pain, I just take hold of it with my hand and pull it out by faith. Now I want you to re reach over and touch your toes three times. Now, tell me about it now. It's feeling a lot better. <laughs> what happened to you? Uh, years ago, uh, through athletics and the Marines, uh, damaged, and found out years ago that I damaged my foot and started de degenerating to a hallux rigidus. And just basically over the last years, whenever I walked around my feet a lot, just consistent pain. And for the most part, as the gentleman said, Stood up here the whole time. Usually at this point, I would be shifting weight and trying to get weight off mm -hmm. of it and had no, no problems. 
No pain now? No. Not Praise no. God. Oh, give him a God bless you. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 What did I tell you about this morning? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I saw it in my spirit what God was going to do today. But he showed me that I needed to prepare the way last night for what was going to happen today. Uh, everyone needs an introduction to get ready for the first chapter. That's what all books have. And that's what's happening here. And I am so grateful. I give all the honor and all the glory to God. I'm not the one who's done this. I'm just the conduit through whom God's power is flowing. But it's not my power. It's His power. And I give Him the glory. And I give Him the honor. Let's just stand for a moment, everybody. And lift our hands and just give Him thanks. Just give Him praise. Thank you, Father. Praise you. Praise you, Father. We thank you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Father. Praise him. Praise him. What key are you in? Let me hear the, hear the dominant chord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, sing that one more time. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him above ye. Sorry, wrong words. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. Give him praise today. Now, others of you are winting. Okay? Sometimes healings come immediately. Sometimes they come over a process. Like the testimony I gave last night about my wife. She had migraines for three more days, and she never had another one, and that was 43 years ago. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm winting. The Bible says some were healed as they went. Okay? Praise God. Uh, over there to my left and to your right is a uh, product table. I brought some resources. I brought Lindsay's book, Discover Your True Worth. I brought my newest book, God's Healing Touch. And also I brought a three CD series called the Miracle Living Series, which is on healing the Holy Spirit and seed faith. And it is available over there. Pastor, I'm turning it back to you. I will be back here at 6 p.m. tonight. With bells on. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Isn't he good? The Lord, isn't he good? Praise the Lord. Father, we lift our hands in gratitude once again. So grateful for your power and your anointing. And Father, for what you've done in our lives. We thank you, Father, for ministering to all these precious people. We, go we glorify you. We acknowledge that it's you that has done it. And no man, we thank you, Father God, for it in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I, uh, back in 2021, <clears throat> back uh, actually two years ago, almost right now, um, I, well, previous to that, I had injured my back out working on some things outside, and it was, it was intense. I mean, pain wouldn't go away. 
And I got up one morning on April the 14th, actually, and I just said, 2021, I said, I'm free from this. And I thought that sounded real good, but something started bothering me down on the inside. And I knew that's the teacher on the inside wanting to tell me something. So I dipped down in and I said, Lord, what are you, what are you, what, 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 what's wrong with what I said? He said, when you say this, you're expressing ownership and present tense possession. He said, you should have said, I'm free from that. I got taught that that morning. I said, I got taught that morning. Amen. If I said to you, this, this iPad is a great blessing to me. It helps me do so many things and work, work so many things. If I said this, or if I laid it on the chair and I said, that iPad. When I'm, when I'm in possession of it, I'm saying this. When I say that, it's like that's something removed from me. It does, it's not in my possession. It's removed from me. I want to encourage you with your words from now on. It's no longer I have. I said, it's no longer I have. It is now I had, but I now have healing. We heard, heard that last night, didn't we? The Lord helped me, and I'm just helping you with what helped me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our words are not going to hold on to the thing which is of the past. That's now gone. We are now healed. We had sickness, but now we have healing. That's what it means when it says, when you pray, believe that you receive. That's right now. Now I have it. Now I have my healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you get it? The Lord helped me. We're just passing that along. I'm telling you, out of his compassion and love for us, he, he helps us. Praise the Lord.